Hello, it's Deborah from The Attic and today I have the latest card kit from Simon Says Stamp. This is a January 2020 card kit and it's called Snowflake Builder. Let's look at the things that are going to glare under the lights first. We start with this wafer thin die. This is a wafer thin snowflake die and then we have these gorgeous little snow globes from Tim Holtz. As you can see they have a flat base so they stand on the wooden plinth and then the bulb is above and that's where we'll put any decorations and there are also distress mica flakes and these might be useful in connection with those globes next let me show you the stamp set because this is a snowflake builder it's six by eight it has many snowflakes and sentiments and also a banner but this is a little bit different it has little dotted lines around two or three or groups of these snowflakes. And once we've had a look at the rest of the kit, I'm going to show you in a little bit more detail how we can make use of that information. There are two bottles in this kit. The first bottle is alcohol ink and the color is stream. And the second bottle is distress collage medium matte. And that might be very useful with these distress mica flakes to use to adhere the flakes to our projects. Then there are four envelopes in this beautiful colorway. I really love these colors. And two of these are pearlized and two are plain. And then there are a range of six by six papers. And let me show you the reverse of each of these. There are five of these papers all together. They're all double sided and they're from Kayser Craft. These colours complement the colours of the envelopes and the cardstock, which are sea glass, smoke, slate and white. To complete the collection, there is a 6x6 piece of cardstock in silver glitter. I said that I was going to show you in more detail how we can make use of the information on the stamp set. For example, around these two stamps, there is a dotted line. That means that they're going to work together. I've stamped these out, the large one and the small one, as you can see, and then I've built them. So I've taken the largest and I've stamped it out first and then I've taken the smaller one, I've positioned it very carefully over the first stamp and then I've stamped it down. And you can see that gives a beautiful composite snowflake. I've done the same with the two little snowflakes on the bottom of the stamp set. I've taken each of these, I've stamped out the large one, then the small one, and then I've put them together. I've stamped out the large one first, then I've put the smaller one over the top, positioned it carefully and stamped it down. And this can give us a whole range of ways that we can use these stamps using different colour inks or different colour embossing powders. For our first project, I thought it would be fun to start with the little globe. And you can see that it fits nicely into this wooden base. I've cut out using the wafer thin die, one of the snowflakes, and I've cut it from the silvery paper. I'm actually going to cut out two of these. I'm also going to cut away the centre because you can change the shape of the snowflakes and you can layer them almost in the same way that you can layer the snowflakes in the stamp kit. And we're going to do a little bit of that. There's a number of things that you could put into your snow globe. I decided I wanted to focus just on using the items in the kit. So I'm going to create a small enough snowflake that will fit inside the glass globe. And here's the snowflake that's left from the centre of the main die. I've cut out two of these and these are just small enough to fit inside the globe. I'm going to use some of the packaging that the stamp set came in. I'm just going to use this strip from the bottom very usefully. This has got a layer of adhesive which is also going to help me. I'm going to attach one of the snowflakes at the topmost edge on the adhesive. Then I'm going to attach the second one. I'm going to use the distress medium to glue them both together and make sure both of those silver sides are facing outwards. Snip away any excess packaging around the snowflake and leave yourself a tag at the bottom that's just long enough to fold over so that it can be glued to the wooden base but will fit within the globe like this in the center. Use a blob of the distress medium and then press your folded edge into the bottom of the wooden base and then leave it to dry. Now take some of the Distress Mica Flakes and drop them into the globe. Add as many as you think you would like. That looks very pretty, but let's add some interest with some contrasting coloured Mica Flakes. I've got an excess laminated sheet here, which I'm using to protect my desk. This is quite important because we're going to use the alcohol ink and it does stain. Tip out a few of the Distress Mica Flakes and then add just a drop of the alcohol ink that was included in the kit. 
distribute the ink with a non-staining tool. I'm just using my pokey tool here and make sure that that alcohol ink covers all of those mica flakes. Remove them onto a wet wipe. This will help get rid of any excess alcohol ink. You can see how well they retain their shimmer and you can use any alcohol ink you have in your stash to colour the flakes. Now I'm going to scoop them up and I'm going to add them to my globe. Run a line of glue along the inside of the wooden base and then put the wooden base on top of the globe and leave everything upside down and give it a chance to dry. Once dry you can turn it the right way up again and give it a wee sugar. For our first card, I've cut down a piece of the grey cardstock from the kit so it is a standard card size and I'm going to use the die cut to cut right from the centre of the piece of card. This piece of grey cardstock is going to be used as a mat later on in our card and I hope you can see how lovely and intricate the snowflake is. It's a really lovely die. I've cut down a piece of paper from the card kit so that it leaves me a tiny border around the outside of my grey base card from which we cut the snowflake. My matching grey snowflake is going to sit around about here and to finish off my card I'm going to stamp this banner from the stamp set on white cardstock with black ink and I'm going to use the same black ink to add a sentiment to the centre of the banner and then I'm going to cut the banner out. I decided that I wanted more contrast for my grey snowflake and so I've used the white cardstock to cut out another snowflake but I've only popped out the outer elements, I haven't popped out the centre. And that's Buster offering some advice, so he's suggesting that I cut out that outer edge of the grey snowflake so that there's even uh, more of a contrast. He's quite a creative dog so I'm going to take his advice and let's see what we end up with. I think he was right, I think that's going to look really really nice on the front of our card. And I'm going to use the distress medium that came in the kit to glue everything down. This can also be used as a sealant and it will dry matte and clear. Because this is a wet glue it also gives you some wiggle room when you're gluing things in position. That's our finished card so feel free to play around with layering that snowflake die. I want to offer you lots of ways that you can use the alcohol ink so here's another way. I've cut down a piece of the light blue cardstock from the kit and I've put a piece of foam on an applicator tool. I've added dots of the alcohol ink to that and I'm going to go all over the sheet of card and I'm going to change the colour. Eventually you'll end up with something like this which you can use as a background card or you can use to cut some of the snowflakes from using the die cut. And here's how the snowflake looks when it's cut from that card. I think it's a really pretty contrast. I've got some stays on stone grey ink and I'm going to use that to ink up and stamp the largest of the stamps in the set. I'm going to stamp it down onto a piece of paper which I've cut down to be a standard card size. Next I'm going to line up the die on the top of my stamped image and I'm going to use some washi tape to hold it in place while I run it through my die cutting machine. And when I remove the washi tape very carefully so as not to rip the paper underneath, I'm going to reveal the outer shape of the snowflake. I don't actually want the snowflake itself. And I'm going to back this with a piece of grey cardstock which I've cut to be slightly larger than the piece of paper on the front. I'm going to make use of the packaging again. If you have other acetates or if you have laminated sheets that you can use by all means go ahead and use those but I like to try and use what's in the box. So I'm going to take one of these sheets of packaging and cut it down so that it can go on the reverse of my die cut shape and I'm going to stick that down. I'm adding dots of glue using a fine nozzled glue applicator to the reverse of my snowflake which I cut out earlier. And to give my design extra sparkle, I'm taking one of the outer edges from my earlier snowflake experiments. This is a nice silver border and I'm going to add that to the outside of my darker coloured snowflake. And then I'm going to glue both pieces into the gap that was left in my piece of paper when I used the die cut just to cut out the shape. I'm going to use one of my stamp blocks to press down onto the shapes to help them glue nicely. I'm sure you know by now this is going to be a shaker card. So here comes the craft foam. This is my preferred way of adding dimension to the reverse of my card to lift it up so I've got space to add any inclusions. I'm going to figure out where I need to cut the hole to allow the inclusions to be added just by eye and by guess. So I'm going to remove the top layer, I'm going to hold my craft knife in place and then I'm going to roughly cut out a circle. 
And that's all the work I need to do with my craft knife. So I'm going to work on the reverse with my scissors. It's just a little bit easier to give yourself a start with a craft knife. So I can see I need to cut away a little bit more and I'll keep doing this. I'll keep cutting and then checking until I know I've got exactly the right size that I need. When I'm happy with the size of my craft foam, I'm going to glue it onto the reverse of my design. Still working on the back, I'm going to tip some of the Distress Mica Flakes into the centre of my card. And once I'm happy with how many I have in there, I'm going to put the grey card that's underneath at the moment. I'm going to glue that onto the black craft foam that you can see. And then that will make sure that all of my Mica Flakes are in the right place and captured safely. And when I turn my card over, there's a nice shimmery effect. I'm going to add a sentiment using some stays on teal blue because that's a nice matching colour for my snowflake. And I'm going to stamp this onto a piece of almost white paper. It's a strip that I've cut from the reverse of one of my pieces of paper that I've used to make the card. And to continue the sparkle theme, I'm going to cut a fine strip of the glitter cardstock, which I'm going to use as a mat for my sentiment. Once that's all glued on the bottom of my card, my card is complete and I can give it a sugar to test it. For a quick easy card, I've cut down a piece of cardstock. This is the beautiful blue and silver and I've also cut down a piece of card that has got a gap top and bottom. I've got two white snowflakes and I've got some stays on stone grey ink. I'm going to roughly put my snowflakes in this position and then I'm going to stamp my sentiment in the corner. I've chosen to use a stays on grey ink because that matches better with the colours from the piece of paper I've cut down. Working on a piece of yellow nasty scrap paper underneath, I'm going to take my distress medium and I'm going to apply a little line to the top and the bottom of my paper. And then I'm going to take my mica flakes and I'm going to gleefully throw them all over the paper and I'm just going to let them stick where they fall. I'm going to tap off the excess which I'm going to put back into my little bottle and when that dries it's going to have fantastic shimmer. I'm going to glue everything down onto my piece of blue cardstock and I'm going to use this three-in-one glue. I'm using this one because it doesn't leave gluey traily threads underneath the paper when you stick it down as some wetter glues can do. For example the Distress Medium wouldn't be the best option to use for this. Alternatively if you have Tape Runner you can use that. Now I'm going to glue down both of my snowflakes and I'm going to weight them down with a couple of stamp blocks to help them adhere really well. And our card is complete. Our fourth card is going to use three snowflakes which I've cut from white cardstock. I've got a piece of the light grey card which I've cut down to be a standard card size and I'm going to position my snowflakes in such a way that when I take a pencil I can run a curved line down one side on the top and one side underneath the snowflakes and that will give me a guide because I want to cut two curves. I'm going to cut the top and the bottom lines that I drew in and I'm going to reserve the outside pieces and discard that central piece. I don't need that one. Use an eraser to get rid of any pencil marks that you may have left on your cardstock. My background card is dark grey and it's been cut down so it's the same size as the standard card size and the same size as the two lighter grey pieces. I'm going to position the two grey pieces on the card just make sure that my snowflakes will fit within that central area. I'm going to choose a stamp from the set that will fit in the bottom left corner and then I'm going to use a clear embossing pad and some white embossing powder to stamp and heat set my sentiment on the bottom left piece of the light grey cardstock. I never get tired of watching embossing powder melt so that it adheres to your cardstock. It's a wonderful effect. I have some offcuts of craft foam which I'm going to use to back those two pale pieces of grey card. You don't have to worry about making this look pretty and as you can see I didn't worry for a moment. The important thing is to make sure you get into all the little corners and all the little pokey bits and then you can glue them up and stick them onto your card. These will give some nice dimension to those central snowflakes. Once the two light grey pieces of card are stuck down you can turn your attention to the three snowflakes and glue them into position as well. For some extra pizzazz, I've added a little spot of glue into the centre of my snowflakes and I'm dropping on some of those Distress Mica flakes on the top. They will give the card a lovely shimmer. If you prefer and if you have them, you could add Nouveau Crystal Drops to the centre of those snowflakes. For our next card, we're going to use the packaging. This is what contained the two little snow globes and I'm going to cut two snowflakes from this backing card. 
I'm going to use a little protective piece of waste laminate sheet that I used before to protect my mat as I add colour to the front of these using the alcohol ink from the kit. And using the packaging, which has got a shiny finish on it, gives us a slightly shiny finish to our snowflakes as well. I'm going to use a variety of sizes of snowflakes from the kit and I'm going to ink these up using the plain embossing ink that I used before and I'm going to stamp these across the card from left to right with the largest in the centre and the smaller ones radiating out to the sides. And then I'm going to sprinkle over a WOW embossing powder called Midas Touch. I'm using this one because it's a silver based embossing powder but it has a hint of blue which perfectly complements the other colours in my card. And once again I'm going to heat set this. I'm going to back my design with a white piece of cardstock but I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can change the colour of the background so that it will match better with the colours on the front of the design. One way is to use a Copic marker and the other way is to use your alcohol ink. Since I've already shown you a way to use the alcohol ink, let's use the marker and you can use any pen, alcohol marker, watercolour marker, whatever it is that matches the front of your design. Add a thin line of the colour at the top and the bottom of the card or where you want that background to be visible. It will look very scruffy at the moment but as soon as you put your top layer onto it, it all comes together and it looks like a really smart layer behind your front design. Now I'm going to mess around with the location of my snowflakes. I won't subject you to my faffing about. I'm going to decide where I want to glue them and then I'm going to stick them in place. I've added a little bit of silver that I've cut down from another snowflake in an earlier card. I've got my teal stays on ink again. I'm only using stays on because this happens to be the colour that I want. And I'm going to add my sentiment in the bottom right corner. And with that, our card is complete. Now we're going to have a go at layering the stamps and trying out some different embossing powders. So I've got white and I've got my Midas Touch. That was a silver one with a touch of blue. I'm using a WOW embossing ink and I'm going to ink up, first of all, the largest stamp. Then I'm going to stamp it right in the centre of a piece of grey card, which I've cut down so that it's the size of a standard card. I'm going to cover it with white embossing powder and then I'm going to heat set it. And this is how it looks when it's heat set. Next, I'm going to take the smaller die, the one that matches with this, and I'm going to use the same embossing ink. and I'm going to stamp it onto the one below, making sure that I line everything up properly. And this time I'm going to sprinkle it with the Midas Touch silver based embossing powder. So we have two different embossing powders and I'm going to heat set that as well. This is how it looks when the heat has been applied. And I think that's a wonderful effect. So you have white on the outside on the largest snowflake and then that lovely silver on the center. I got a ruler and a pencil and I'm going to find the center point in my card and I'm going to draw a light pencil line across the middle taking care not to actually draw the line through the snowflake. Taking my scissors, I'm going to cut half of the snowflake out only, and those two pencil lines will make sure that I get an equal half. I'm going to add my sentiment, and I'm going to ink it up and then use white heat embossing powder to seal it in place. The top of our design is complete, and now I'm going to use some scraps from my craft foam again to cut out and glue onto the reverse of my design. It's messy as always, that's part of the fun. I quite like that it's messy at the back, but it's glorious on the front. Once that's done, you can glue it down and I'm going to secure this onto a piece of paper that I've cut from the pack and I've cut it to be a standard card size. For our final card today, we had eight projects, but we only had seven cards. It's going to be an assembly job. I've cut down some paper to be a V shape at the bottom and then I've added it to a light grey mat on the reverse. I've cut down another piece of paper and I'm going to add this to a layer of the soft blue paper. I've also inked and stamped and cut out a greeting on the banner that says winter greetings. I've got two snowflakes and I'm going to use the darker one as a background and the silver one I've cut away the outside edge so we're going to do some nice neat layering with our snowflakes again. I'm going to glue this down onto the centre of my tag shaped piece of paper. That's our finished card. I'm going to say thank you very much for your time. As always, thank you for watching. I'm going to leave you with a little music and some close ups of all of the cards that we've made today and our little globe project as well. And until we meet again, take care.